Greetings rhetoricians. I am in Rome and I thought what better place to bring you a lesson on rhetoric, specifically on oratory, than in Rome. So although Greece is the birthplace of rhetoric, Rome has made so many advances in rhetoric. What you're studying today is taken directly from Aristotle, the Romans borrowed from the Greeks, and then the Romans perfected, if you will, rhetoric which is what you're learning in this class today. So you're, we're talking going all the way back to the 4th century BC with Aristotle to the 1st and 2nd century BC with Cicero. So your lesson is on Cicero and I am standing here in the Roman Forum. What I'd like to talk to you about are the five canons of rhetoric that Cicero developed because he believed that rhetoric was important to study for citizenship. If you as a citizen wanted to get anywhere in life, you needed to learn how to speak. And so what he did was, whenever you would have to give a speech, he canonized rhetoric into five basic principles. Now I'm going to go over the principles, and then I'm going to show you exactly where Cicero spoke on stage. It's called a rostra, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but first the lesson. So Cicero's five canons of rhetoric. The first one is invention. Invention is an idea. It's, if it's an informative speech, it's your idea. If it's a persuasive speech, it's your argument. So you need to have first and foremost an idea, and it might take you more time to do that than anything else, thinking of what you actually want to speak about, what your point is, what your argument is going to be. The second canon is arrangement. He said, he borrowed from Aristotle in the sense for you as a speaker to have any credibility, your ethos, you have to speak in an organized fashion. That's why in this class I have you always select an organizational pattern for the body of your speech. You can't be all over the place with your ideas, otherwise your audience will not see you as a credible speaker. So, so he said arrangement is the second canon of rhetoric. The third canon of rhetoric is style, and he was really known for his style. He could talk to audiences for hours because of his style. So your style would actually be the metaphors that you use, it's how well you adapt your message to your audience. You, if you were speaking to a group of younger people, let's say a group of middle school children or high schoolers, you would speak differently to them than you would to a group of older adults. Different generations have different things in common. So Air Cicero said that you have to adapt your message to your audience. You can't be a noble self, meaning that this is who I am and this is how I deliver my message all the time to people. I don't change. He said you have to change. If you want to win over the people, you have to change and you have to adapt to your audience. The fourth principle, the fourth canon of rhetoric is delivery. He said you need to speak in a way that's going to enhance your message and you need to keep your audience on their toes. So you need to have a really strong delivery. That's your eye contact. That's your use of gestures. In today's world, we want you to speak extemporaneously in a very conversational manner. You want to bring your message to life so that you can reach out and grab your audience. And then finally, the fifth canon is memory. So back then they would memorize their speeches and their speeches were sometimes hours long. So we don't do that today. But today when we are talking about memory is you need to know what you're talking about. Parts of your speech you might memorize but you never want it to, to sound canned in any way. But you need to know what you're talking about. So those are the five canons of rhetoric. First is invention. Second is arrangement. Third is style fourth is delivery, and fifth is memory. So if you ever have to give a speech and you forget everything else of what you learned in this class, remember the five canons of rhetoric. So that's our lesson for today. And what I'd like to do is show you some of the Roman rooms. So if our camera person will come on over. So right over here, it looks like a, a black solar panel. And right beyond that panel, it's called a rostra. I think I'm pronouncing it properly, a rostra. And that is where, that was the stage where Cicero actually gave his speeches, performed his speeches to audiences. And you can see there's a column right beyond the stage, the rostra, and there's just one column that's left standing beyond that. And then out to the right, you'll see all the Roman ruins that are still left today. 
And unfortunately, from where I'm standing, you cannot see, but there's the Temple of Jupiter and there are other temples here. There's the Triumphant Arch, and this arch was modeled after what Napoleon actually did in Paris. He created the Arc de Triomphe, and that was modeled after the Romans. They stole a lot from the Romans, the French. And then if you look over to the left, it doesn't look that majestic, but that was the actual Senate building where all the senators were, and Cicero later on in life became a senator. Some interesting information about, about Cicero is because of his ability to be an amazing speaker, he was a senator at the time, he wanted Rome to go back to a republic, and Julius Caesar was just killed, he was the dictator, and he wanted Rome to go back to being a republic. He was done with the dictators, done with the emperors, because he believed that the people should appoint their politi politicians, their political officials, so that the people actually had a say. So he was very much a people's type of politician. And he spoke out against Mark Antony. Mark Antony was of the Second Triumvirate. And because he spoke out, he delivered numerous speeches. They're called the Philippic speeches. And because he spoke out against Mark Antony, what ended up happening to him was Mark Antony put a hit on his life and he tried to flee, but the seas were too high, and so he ended up coming back. Soldiers found Cicero, and because he was the orator, the great orator that he was, he used his voice to speak out against what he thought was pretty much tyranny. He was killed for that. And so because he used his voice, and because he used his hands to write his speech, what Mark Antony had the soldier do was kill him, they severed his hands, and they severed his head, and they nailed it to the forum, which is where Cicero used to speak. And they said, pretty much, that was the message for everyone else. If you're going to speak out against us, this is what's going to happen to you. So it was a real tragic death for Cicero. But Cicero is known as one of the greatest orators of all time. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about him. And I hope you enjoyed learning about the five canons of rhetoric. Don't forget invention, arrangement style, delivery, and memory, and I'm glad you were able to see a bit of our Roman ruins. Arrivederci.